Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm hanging out at a not so exciting beach here on the Caribbean Sea and you can see behind me here that we've got sort of cars and buildings and all kinds of things going on. And not only that, but some of my gear, my video gear was stuck in customs and so I'm shooting this whole thing with my Osmo Pocket. That's what's following me around right now. So it's going to be a challenge making this video today. The goal is, I want to see if I can take this scene, which is not very pleasing, and use the appropriate gear, the appropriate composition, and the appropriate post-production to make this look like something that you would want to hang on your wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in the way that maybe you shouldn't take this photo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 50 millimeter lens set at f8, and I'm just going to take a picture of the sea here. So f8, ISO 100, I have my camera set to aperture priority mode. When I take this shot, it's at about uh, 180th of a second, it looks like right now. And yeah, that is absolutely an incredibly boring shot. We don't want that. We want to make this scene look more exciting. Now up in the sky, we have on and off some pretty exciting little puffy clouds coming in and out. Maybe we can take advantage of that. Also, we have over here, we have this uh, little pier coming out. It's got some rocks and things behind me. I don't think you can see that in the video. But what we want to do here is take advantage of all of that stuff. So I'm going to switch to a 21 millimeter lens, the appropriate gear for the job. The 50 is not what we need to use. So what I'll do here is I'm going to take my 50 millimeter off. I'll put my 21 millimeter on. Now we're getting to where we need to be. Let's take another shot and see what our 21 millimeter lens does for us. So I'm going to set that again at f8, but this time I'm going to set my lens to hyperfocal. That means everything is in focus from the very closest to the very farthest away. I've made videos about this. Links are in the description below. But now let's check this out and see what our 21 millimeter lens does for us. So I'm going to take this right here, level that out, take a shot, get a little bit of the beach, take this again, get a lot of the sky. Okay, well now what we can see here is we're getting a little bit more of all of this stuff that's behind me, and it's a more interesting shot. But I think we can do better. One of the things that I can do is, instead of standing at eye level, I can actually come down here and shoot down closer to ground level, and I'm getting a much more pleasing shot. Let's get a better look at what I'm shooting here. I've got this, uh, these rocks that are going out into the ocean, and then I've got just the sea behind me. And I'm going to use these rocks here to pull our eye into the scene. Again, I'm getting down low so that we have more foreground interest showing us out to the ocean. All right, so that's good. We have a wide angle lens. We're shooting at hyperfocal distance. We're shooting closer to the ground, but we can do even better. We want to make this into something that is unrealistically pretty. So what I'm going to do here is in my camera bag, I have another tool that I use all the time. This is a ND filter. This is a 1.6, I believe, or 1.8. It's a six stop neutral density filter. Now, if you don't know about neutral density filters, have no fear. I've made videos about those as well. Links are in the description below. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and put this on my lens. A neutral density filter, by the way, is just a little, uh, it's a uh, like sunglasses for your lens. And so it's going to make this darker by six stops and that's going to allow me to slow my shutter down considerably. Now slowing down my shutter is going to do some things for us. One is going to smooth everything out which is really really good and so that will make everything uh, sort of smooth and un er, uh, unworldly looking. I need to use a tripod to do that so I have my tripod right here. I've got this set up so I'm going to put my camera on my tripod because now when I'm doing this and I look into the lens, I'm seeing that my shutter is a seventh of a second, one seventh of a second. So I'll take a slow shutter here. Things are starting to look really good. So what I want to do is I want to slow the shutter down even more. So I'm going to get a manual exposure. So I'm going to manually put this on two seconds. So now I've got it on one, two seconds here. What that's going to do though, it's going to blow out the sky. The sea should be okay. But let's just take a quick shot and see what happens. I need to make sure I lock this shot in. I need to come back just a little bit to make this work. 
need to make sure I lock this shot in exactly where I want it to be. They've got it all leveled. I've got my log in the scene. All right, I'll take that shot. It's two seconds and it looks pretty good. The problem with this though is things are being blown out. So what I need to do is I need to be able to do some post-production magic. I need to be able to shoot multiple exposures and then combine all of those things so I get the sky and the foreground and the sea. I can get that blurred uh, kind of look that I want. And I wanna be able to tone everything in a custom tone to make it look unrealistically pretty. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna go into my menu and I'm gonna set my camera to auto exposure bracketing. What that will let my camera do is it will shoot one uh, photo overexposed, one photo exposed correctly, and one photo underexposed. And even for some bonuses, I'll probably even shoot one way up and one way down. So it's really easy to do. I'm just gonna go into my menu and go into my menu, the drive mode. I'm gonna go into exposure bracketing and then set that to five frames, one stop over and under on each. So once I have that locked in, I've got my uh, image all set. I'll take a picture. My camera's gonna take five images. That's all done. So I've got some that are overexposed, some that are underexposed. And now what I can do is I can go into post-production, take all of this stuff that we used, interesting composition, slow shutter speed using a neutral density filter, a wide angle lens to pull the viewer in, foreground interest, and then we can take it to the next level. Another thing I'm doing here before I go inside, I'm just gonna stay out here for probably another hour waiting for the sun to change, waiting for the clouds to change. I'm getting different viewpoints here. I'm using something a little bit closer to the beach, a little bit farther away. I wanna make sure I give myself every single opportunity to succeed that I can. So I'm just gonna hang out here, shoot a bunch of different shots before I go inside. Well, in the middle of the day, I wasn't too impressed with the quality of photos. It was just too bright in the sky. The dynamic range was too much and the clouds were not interesting. So I just waited until the sun went uh, just down right above the horizon till the golden hour. We got some sunset, we got some pinks and blues and amazing colors in the sky. And now we're getting much more incredible results. The sun is now set, but I'm still out here shooting some images because again, I wanna give myself every possible chance to succeed. So I'm gonna get back to my camera and we'll just keep shooting and see what we get. This is so much better. Well, I'm back from the beach. I think all the hard work has paid off. We're about to hop into post-production and work on this image. But let's review the four things that I did to change how things looked. The first thing I did was I changed from a standard 50 millimeter lens to a wide angle lens, and that opened up all kinds of possibilities, specifically when I paired it with the second thing, which is changing my point of view. Now going from standing at eye level to getting down low, that really changes how we view the scene. It allows me to add foreground interest and pull our eye into the scene. Later on, I went from the right side of those rocks to the left side of the rocks, just looking for the best composition possible. The third thing I did was I slowed the shutter speed way down. That allowed us to smooth out the ocean and create a look that is better than reality. It sort of makes the ocean look like glass, which I absolutely love. And then finally, I just changed the time of day. And what that did was A, it allowed me to shoot with really slow shutter speeds, even without the neutral density filter. Also it added a lot of color to the scene and then the most spectacular thing, totally by chance, that happened to be a storm rolling in and there was a lightning strike that happened and I was able to capture that on one of the images. And so that's the image that we're going to start working with right now. So let's hop to it and hop into Lightroom. Here's my final lightning image. Before I show you how I edited this, let me just show you the images that I shot and edited through the day. So these first two images are images that I created during the daytime. You can see that this first image, it's one shot that came out of the camera. It's a two second exposure. You can see how we're getting this nice smooth ocean that was used using the neutral density filter, that technique that I showed you. The other one here, this is an HDR image. And so what I did, I can go back and show you that I took five images. Here are the five images. I shot this using the technique I showed you called auto exposure bracketing to shoot these five images. 
and then I combined those to create this final HDR image. Now I've created tutorials on editing HDR images, so make sure you look at the links in the description of this video to learn how to do that. What I really wanna do is show you one technique using graduated filters to create images like this lightning shot. So to do that, let's jump over to the develop module. I'm gonna use the shot that came out of the camera because it doesn't look so exciting at first glance. And so what I did in the develop module is I first created some basic tonal adjustments in the develop module. So I'm gonna just save some time and click on a snapshot that I created. And what this does is it uh, applies all those adjustments that I made earlier. So I cropped this, I leveled this out, I changed the white balance and then some of the basic exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, etc. The thing that really makes this image work though is a technique I used uh, using this tool called the graduated filter. What a graduated filter allows you to do is edit different regions of a photo independent of each other. So the sky I want to edit in one way, the ocean I want to edit in a different way, and then these rocks over here, I want to edit those in a third way. So I have the sky, the sea, and the rocks, three different regions. So we're going to use the graduated filter to edit the sky and the sea, and then this paintbrush to edit the rock. So let me just show you how this works. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to click on the graduated filter. When I do that, I get all these controls that I can use to add to this filter. On the image itself, I get this little square. So if I click that and drag down, you'll see that on the top of the screen, everything turns blue, so the sky. So the filter is applied opposite the direction that you drag. So I've got three lines here. Let me show you what they do. The first uh, the first and last line here, this shows you the transition area of the filter. So the filters up here, this blue area, it starts fading out at this first line. The midpoint of the transition is the center line. And the last line here is where the filter is doing nothing. So down here, nothing is happening. The only thing that's happening is above this middle line here. The center line, I can hover over that, click and drag to rotate this filter. So if I have an uneven horizon or something, so these work with horizontal or vertical areas in an image. And then what I can do on the other lines is I can click and drag to make the transition uh, sharper or much, much more gradual. So I want this to be a pretty sharp transition. So I'm gonna drag these together and then I can click on the dot itself to move the entire thing. So I'm gonna move that up so it's right on the horizon and I'm gonna make this a very, very, uh, very sharp transition here. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the sky and I wanna apply some things. I wanna change the color, temperature, and exposure, and contrast, and leave the bottom alone. So let me just really quickly change these values. All right, clearly I had those values uh, figured out in advance, but you would be able to uh, experiment with this till you get the look that you want. So I've applied this to the top of the scene. And just moving along really quickly, let me just add another graduated filter to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to go here, click new, and then I'm going to click on the horizon and drag up because I want this to be opposite where I'm dragging, which is the bottom of the screen. Then I will make this go on the horizon. And then I'm just going to really quickly add some values to this, changing my color temperature and my exposure and also my saturation just a hair. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you'll notice that I've got some issues when I close this. And that is over here on these rocks, I have this uh, top of this that is being impacted because this is not a horizontal. It needs to be jagged. So these neutral dents or these graduated filters are affecting this rock. There has to be a way that I can change that. There is. So I'm gonna go back up here, click on my graduated filter. I will click on the top one and we'll just do one of these. I'll show you how to change this. So I'm gonna click on this. If I hover over it, you can see this uh, pink that shows up. That shows me where this filter is applied. If I click on it, I can now make edits. Notice this filter is just a horizontal line. So that's why it's cutting across this rock. We wanna be able to take this horizontal line and make it jagged to match the rock. You can do that by going over here and clicking on brush. Now what you can do is you can add and subtract to your filter using a brush. So I'm going to erase this little part of this top filter. I'm just gonna do this very, very quickly and roughly because I need to save time. Then what I'll do here is I'll close that and then I'm gonna to go to the bottom graduated filter 
I'm going to go to a brush and this one I'm going to click the A brush that's going to add and then I will add in the filter from the bottom to these rocks and so I'm changing just this little shape right here of course I would take much more time if I was just doing this in real time so what I can do now is I can hover over this and now you can see where I've painted on the right side that the uh, filter is matching the contour of the rock. So I can manually change this horizontal line when I come in contact with things like mountains or rocks or something like that. It's really, really simple. Now the last thing I need to do is I want to uh, change these rocks over here so I can just click on this brush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a brush to paint in a filter on these rocks really quickly. And then once I'm done with that, then what I can do is I can change the uh, saturation and some things and I can really quickly bring that to exactly the point that I want it to be because this is sort of orange and yucky and so I can just play with that just a little bit. Well after spending quite a bit of time I was able to dial this in exactly right so let me show you the final results. So the graduated filter I'll click on that if I hover over the top one and let this show me exactly where I've edited things you can see that it matches the contours of that rock exactly and the same thing is true of the bottom one. It is matching the horizon and the rock exactly, which is exactly what I need this to do because I want this to be uh, a nice and clean edit. So if I print this, it's going to match exactly. Also, if I click on the brush, then you can see where I have edited the rocks. I'll go down here and hover over this dot and you can see that that is matching those rocks exactly. So I was able to create an image and isolate three different zones and then edit those independent of each other once I set my first tonality. And I think the results are pretty spectacular. Well, I hope this helped you out Four basic changes to go from drab to fab. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's totally free. Make sure you turn on the bell so you get notifications. And why not just follow me on Instagram? That way you can see me posting some behind the scenes images. You can follow me as I travel around the world and get some insight. And you can interact with me, ask me questions. It's pretty awesome. So do that. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again next time.